When I was shopping in Lidl's for food shopping this week, I saw this. Um, I don't actually own a Parkside tool of any description, so it's of no real use to me. But for £25, I thought, actually, that's pretty good going. £25 and I get a charger and a battery. So, according to this... I get a lithium-ion battery, it's got cell balancing, longer battery life, increased lifespan, a three-year guarantee, which I find remarkable because it's a struggle to get batteries to last for three years. Uh, 20 volt, 2 amp hour capacity, lithium-ion, I mean, I wonder if I can use this in a different drill. Now, I've seen videos on YouTube where people have used these in different drills so maybe that's possible. Now if we have a look inside we get some instructions which um, obviously I'm not interested in. We've got a charger. Let's shove that box out of the way so we've got a charger and quite a nice looking battery. I mean, that's not bad for a lithium-ion battery. I have already charged it up, which is why this is all undone. Um, so I charged it up. It's got a little button thing you press somewhere. There it is. So it's fully charged at the moment. This is the reason for buying Lidl's battery, or Parkside battery, whatever you want to call it. It's an old, probably 20 year old now, um, Chinese cordless drill. And I could just throw it away. But earlier in the year, I modified the battery. So it's not a NICAD battery anymore. This is a lithium ion 18 volt battery. Uh, you charge it through there and weighs obviously next to nothing because of what it is and the batteries inside take up almost no space and it works quite well main problem I had was this side was broken and so with a little bit of um, well, heat basically, <laughs> from a soldering iron and a piece of scrap plastic. I sort of made a repair there, but it's not much good. But what I wondered when I saw this in the shop was, of course, this piece is flat already. So if I was to cut this lip away, I'd then have a completely flat surface would it be possible to attach this to there? Now of course, no one really cares, it's a rubbish old drill, so what? But I just thought it might be fun. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a go at making some kind of adapter, and I know loads of people have done this before. I don't have a 3D printer of any sort, so I can't print up some very clever thing to make this all work. So I've got to find some way of adapting this to fit that. Now, of course, the clue and the reason why I bought it like this is in the charger, because the charger shows me what shape fits what. So in other words, this obviously fits there. So, if this shape was on there, this battery would fit. So I need to recreate this shape and those prongs, except I probably only need that one and that one, on there, and then this will fit. The only difference being that this has got a sort of locking tab on it, and this hasn't. But you can see, that if you put these side by side, that this would simply need some kind of groove around about here to drop into. 
so that shouldn't be too difficult to make. Now, why would I bother to do this? Well, like I say, partly because it would just be fun, but also I've not had a lot of luck with these batteries that I've made. These batteries are all based on a Bosch electric bike battery. I bought two Bosch electric bike batteries, brand new, on eBay, and I took them to pieces and took the cells out. And they were 1500 milliamp cells, so I thought, well that's great, I can make a 1.5 amp battery and it can be 18 volt or 20 volt or whatever voltage I want to make, but it will always be roughly 1.5 amp hours. But I've not found these batteries to be very reliable, and I don't know if it's my fault or the battery's fault. I know one big mistake I've been making is soldering the cells together, and they don't like that. But I have noticed that if I use one of these homemade batteries for a little while, one cell will die. I take the battery apart, I replace that dead cell, I use it for a little bit longer, and then you can almost guarantee another cell will die. The two Bosch batteries that I bought gave me 36 cells. I doubt I've got more than 10 or 12 left. All the rest have died. Now I don't know whether I have killed them because I used a soldering iron on them, or whether they would have died anyway because they were rubbish cells. But, given that situation, I would rather not bother with this sort of thing like that. I would rather go for something like this. Especially as this battery, I think, if I buy it on its own in Lidl's, is about £15. So if I can make this adapt to this drill, or any other drill, then this is a cheap way of buying a ready-made battery. I found this piece of Perspex. Four mil thick, something like that. Seems to be about four mil thick. It will fit quite comfortably underneath that gap underneath that gap like that and so what I need to do is get a shape like this but I need it made from something like this now that's uh, let's see that's sort of like a sort of a fairly straight edge now the great thing about this of course is that it's clear so I can look at it like this and I can say to myself I line that up roughly with there, then I can say roughly the shape that I need. I need to go down there, down there, and down there like that, something like that, up to there, across, oops, this is where the precision element gets a bit iffy, across there, across to there, up here, up here like that, that seems to go out a little bit, and I'm getting a bit confused with the light here, but that seems to go out a little bit like that, and then that looks like it's tapered when I look down from above, but it isn't tapered, it's just a sort of straight line back, so that is actually going back more or less like that, and that is going back something like that and then of course this just tapers away to nothing so it's a job to decide exactly where that needs to be but this gives us at least a clue now of course this part that's all in here is the part I don't need And all of this out here is the part that I do need. 
Right, let's see if we can add some measurements to this. This part here, maybe around about 14, which means that this line along here needs to be about 14. Now of course 14 in from the other side as well, but of course I don't know where the other side is. I know that. So I can get a fairly good idea of where that should be, let's say. But the thing is, when I was measuring 14, where was I measuring from? somewhere about there, so yes, yeah, so I think that's fair, so if I go down to about there that looks around about, somewhere near in the region of 60, oops <laughs> I don't want to do that um, uh, somewhere in the region of 67, 68, we'll call it 68 so all the way across then seems to be about 68, so that will do so we'll call that 68, now already I can see that this is beginning to not look exactly like that we decided this side needed to be about 14 in from the edge so what I really need is something that I can put there because if I use that as a point of reference there and then if I set this to roughly 14 that's close enough can see how far out some of my measurements appear to have been when I drew it. I don't know if that's a measurement problem or whether it really was that wrong. Well that's one small step in the right direction. I've cut out a square. Uh, nothing fancy, just used a hacksaw. Right, that's two cuts down there, down there. Now I need to go across there and then I've got to cut these two little slots. That's the piece I've cut out, so I think I've made a mistake. I think this bit could have done with being a little bit longer because if we put this on here like this it will fit okay but it wouldn't have hurt to be a little bit longer out here. But the great thing about Perspex is that you can glue it so um, as plastics go it's not a bad plastic for that sort of thing. <laughs> right, now where do I go from here? I'm not really sure. That bit's got to be like that. Somehow I've got to trap that. So I need a thing over there, like that somehow, that's going to trap the whole thing. Right, I think to start with I can just make a loose copy of the outline of this one. And that will at least get me in the right direction. So if I scratch that along there, scratch that, I hate it when you can't, oh, it's moving as well under my fingers. Those will need to be in different places, but that bit will still need to be the same. Uh, did that work? Not very well. It's roughly the shape I think I need to cut out. If it's as clear as mud to you, don't worry, it's about as clear as mud to me as well. 
Okay, right, if we assume that that bit's going to go there, and then if this bit is going to go roughly on there, it's obviously going to need a slot for that to poke through at some point. And then these two bits need to join together in one solid piece. Now, unfortunately, what I've got left of this is not thick enough to go in there. I can make a piece to go in there, but it's uh, not going to be a good fit. I won't bother to show you the hours of work it took to cut that tiny little snot. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But that now fits. I used a mixture of these little bits on a Dremel, a hand file and even a good old hacksaw blade. And it took a long time. <laughs> right, so that bit would go like that, I'm guessing. It's not quite flush with the top, which I don't like. There's a slight hump there, and obviously this is flat, but we'll worry about that later. But the, the problem now is filling in that gap. And there's the bottom plate, and there's this top plate, and we need to fill that gap in. And as I said before, you can see this is not going to do it. I need something, a piece of perspex, that will fit in that gap. Now if I measure that, it's I should add that these are the world's most inaccurate calipers. They're useless. So they might say Oxford Precision on them, but the word precision does not apply. But that does say 5.6. I've made a piece of perspex shape out of the perspex that I've got. And as you can see, it fits okay in there. But once that's on there like that, whichever way you look at it, a bit too much of a gap in here. Um, I can almost, yeah I can in fact get that ruler in that gap. And I think the biggest problem is not the middle one that I've just made, but the bottom one. I think in fact the bottom one needed to be fatter by about the thickness of this ruler. So I need something about that thickness to go under there. I found this, obviously it's a CD case, and this part here looks about the thickness of the gap that's in there. It's not perfect, but it might work okay. So if I was to make a copy of that on there, and then cut that out, it might work to fill up the space that I've got. Not sure what this plastic is. Obviously this is some sort of perspex. I don't know what these are. I don't know if it's some kind of acrylic. Uh, they smash pretty easy, so I don't think they're all that strong. But then it doesn't need to be any strength to it, because it's just sitting under there. So that's what I'll do. This is proving really hard to cut. That corner's already broken off. You can see there's a crack right across there, but luckily i still got to go down further. But the thinness of it just makes it almost impossible to cut. If you're ever tempted to try and cut a piece of Perspex that thin into an intricate shape, don't bother. It took twice as long to make this as it did to make that piece and I don't know if it shows on camera but it really isn't a very good fit. Um, it's off up here, it's off of here, it's not a very good match there. I, I did the best I possibly could but it is really difficult to cut. There are little crazed cracks down that side there, there's one there, there's one there, 
there's a couple here there's a sort of chip there it's very 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 difficult to cut this in any way and not end up with a complete mess so if you're going to do this buy a piece of perspex that's thicker than that the next part I don't know how well this will work but I'm going to use some super glue and see if I can glue this thin piece to that piece so that's what we're going to try Put a fair bit of super glue on there and hope that it doesn't end up gluing my fingers Put that on there that's there and hope that that's square hope that that's more or less square and then I'm just going to put a couple of small clips I don't know if these will actually have enough pressure to hold it tight but I'll try a couple of these I don't know if the super glue will actually glue this or not because I've not tried but I guess we will find out it's trying to stick to my fingers so it does that uh, it either will glue or it won't but obviously I need to glue this to the rest of the pieces of the mount so I really need this to work so that I can do the rest right. that's um, well you can see a mess but it seems to have glued so that is our new bottom plate and it doesn't quite want to go in because it's a tight fit but you can see that once that's in there that's quite a nice fit but it's getting tighter and tighter as I go along so I need a little bit of work on that now but it's it's not bad so it's got about that much extra to go so a little bit more work and then that should fit right that's fitting pretty good now I just need to mark that's where a minus wire needs to go and that is where the plus needs to go same goes for that because obviously that will be part and parcel of the whole thing that will sit on top of there or maybe I don't know which way around it goes now I've lost track but I don't suppose it makes a great deal of difference. Should be symmetrical with a bit of luck. Might want trimming down to match the one underneath, but we'll worry about that later. And then finally that will go on there like that. And the thing is, all those things need to work together. Now obviously if I latch them like that they won't work together because that's in the way. So if I pull that down now these all need to come off together now obviously they're not because this one's still quite tight but I think we might be in the right area and the problem is, is how to glue these together without gluing them to the battery alright let's see if we can get away with a tiny dab of glue to start us off and then this one sitting on top in its place and hopefully just enough glue in there you can just see it there hopefully that's just enough glue for this thing to take hold and eventually stick and not leak out I don't want it to come over the edge onto anything that could be the battery once we've got this thing more or less bonded together we can always try and add some more glue I'm going to try and add a little bit more glue let that soak down from that edge and then turn this one over and add a little bit more glue along that edge and we'll just let this thing soak away and hope that it eventually glues itself together in roughly the right place if not we have to start again Right, as you can see the glue makes everything a little bit cloudy where the joins are but obviously we don't really care what it looks like um, that's still a fairly tight fit 
I haven't quite worked out where it's sticking, but it's does go on okay. The gap down there is not perfect, but it's not too bad. I don't know if it could just be touching a little bit there and preventing it from going slightly all the way in, but I'll worry about that in a moment. And again, I've marked once again where minus and plus need to be. And now I need to find some sort of metal prong. Ideally it needs to be L-shaped so it can come through there and then stick upwards. And then across there and stick upwards. Not sure how this will hold up to heat, but if it's a good connection then maybe there won't be any heat. We'll see. Just in case you didn't believe me about all the soaring. No fancy tools in use here. What worries me is where this contact fits is very, very, very close to the edge. So I'm a little bit worried that the plastic at the edge where the contact goes is going to break. But hopefully it will be supported by the top. The clever people amongst you will have noticed a problem. How do I cut that bit out? I've gone down there with a saw and I've gone down there with a saw. How do I get to that bit in the middle without damaging this edge or that edge? This is how I'm managing it with the Dremel. A little bit left to go. That's probably enough. Oh, nearly enough to snap off. Oh, there it goes. Uh, they're not exactly carbon copies of each other because I found it impossible to keep the Dremel running straight but we'll see if we can tidy them up with a file. Not perfect but two little brass contacts. I'm a bit worried about the corner breaking off that one and the corner breaking off that one but we'll see what happens. Was it worth trying to make those? Not at all. It took way too long. Never mind. Now all we need to do is find out will they fit. Now at the moment that answer would appear to be no. So I need to have a work on that slot so these will fit. Okay, I think I'm making progress. I think that will go in there like that. That one. This one's giving me a bit of grief because it's sort of slightly tilted. I, I don't know how well it shows on the camera but I clearly can't cut things straight and it's a little bit tilted. But we'll see what the battery thinks. And of course the question is, how accurate is that when it goes across? Not very accurate, but it's going. And it's in. Will it pull out again? Yes. But I still don't like the twist on that one. I might have to have a, a few more minutes fiddling with this one because it it's definitely looks twisted to me, but then so does that one. <laughs> right, you just missed me trying to get my finger off of there after I glued it on. Uh, I'll put a bit of glue on this one. You can see that it, I don't know if it shows on the camera, but some glue is running underneath there, so there's still room between some of these plates that I've made for glue to get underneath. The, the biggest problem is it runs straight through to the mat underneath, but that hasn't done that this time. Right, let's try it again. With a bit of luck, the glue has gone hard, if not hard, but hardish. That needs to slide into there which it does, it's quite a tight fit. That goes into there. And now these need to stick up through here. So I'll need that. So I need to mark the exact spot where they are. That's quite difficult to do because um, some idiots put a camera in the way. If I say roughly there... 
roughly there. It won't hurt if I make those slightly bigger. Right, you can guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill some holes and join the holes up. That will be the simplest thing to do. Okay, tiny holes drilled. There you can see I went through there, so one and a half mil bit. I managed to get three holes in there and three holes in there. I'm not sure if that's going to be okay or not. We'll find out. So if we put that on there, that on there, I think the answer there would be no, it's not okay. That won't go down. So, what do we need to do? I think we need to elongate. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe a tiny fraction that way to elongate the holes. Holes seem to be tidy now. Drops on. The only thing I'm worried about is there is a space there, it's difficult to see, but you could probably get a sheet of paper in there and those are not going to glue together with super glue because of that gap. It's uh, just about visible there, a little bit there, but I don't think super glue is going to do it, so I might try some two pack adhesive. I I, that's got a bit more body to it, I don't know. That should fill that gap. I don't know how well it will stick perspex though, so um, we'll find out. I wish they would make these two pack adhesives so that both parts were clear because it would be nice to have a nice clear mixture rather than this sort of disgusting honey coloured gloop. I think I'm mixing up a lot more than I need but all right, here we are maybe five minutes later which obviously shows that this is not five minute epoxy. I think I've got this fairly well mixed, but you know what it's like, you can never be 100% sure. The big problem I've got is I don't want any to go down there, and you can guarantee that, of course, that's exactly what it will do, because why not? I don't think it's going to matter if it gets on the contacts because I should be able to clean it off. Uh, I've got a sneaky feeling that I'm going to end up with a fair amount of this in lots of places I don't want it. But there you go. I suppose I should have put a little bit of masking tape along that bottom ledge. In fact that might not be a bad idea, perhaps I'll do that before I actually put the two pieces together. You can probably imagine getting uh, this done without getting everything stuck to you and getting those bits of tape on there, not fun. Now that down onto there. I'll just have to hope that that's all lined up where I need it to be. Let's squash that out a little bit to the edge. And it's oozing out the edge around here. But I think that's about right. It seems to be more or less lined up along there. I'll have to try and scrape the excess off as you can see there's a lot of excess on this side I uh, don't know what odds we've got of scraping that off but we'll get some of that off hopefully it will sand off once it's gone hard so it's not the end of the world Let's, uh, have a look around this side. Just get rid of. Now, of course, the big problem with this is 
are these points lined up with that point? Because they are when they're on the battery, and of course now they're not on the battery. So I will just have to hope and pray that everything has stayed basically lined up where it's supposed to be. I can't do more than that, I don't think. All fitted together. The only problem is do not use two-pack glue. It has taken me well over an hour to scrape out the two-pack glue that oozed out and even now I cannot get this off. Oh, I can just get it off, but it's been taking me a long time to loosen this and you can see that it needs a bit of a push to get it on maybe that will be a good thing in the future now the next problem is this there's a ridge all the way around the outside here I need to get rid of this ridge may not need to get rid of it completely but I do need to get rid of it because once this is in there Obviously I won't be able to get the battery out because the ridge is in the way. So that ridge has got to go. I think if I take it down till it's about 4 maybe 5 millimetres high that will be okay. Right, ridge all sanded away. Not entirely because I want to leave a little bit to see if it will give it some strength. This those two need to go inside, so they need to go inside there. Can't go any further back unless I start cutting into the handle, and I don't really want to do that yet. Although there is a little bit of room to cut into the handle just there without doing any real damage. So I might try that. But the next thing, of course, is to fix this onto here. Now with that right back at that position, this should slide on okay, just make sure it's gone on properly, on, and you can see it more or less fits in place like that. If I could go back a tiny tiny bit that might be better, but I'm not sure whether it really matters. Right, I've used the Dremel to make it a little bit squarer here and here. You can see I haven't done a very good job there, but basically this can now sit slightly further back. Now all I need to do now is make a mounting point. I need to drill some holes mounting all of this onto here. So I suspect I want a hole somewhere like that. One like that, one like that, and one like that. It's got to be done in such a way that you can unbolt it because these two are different halves of the clamshell so this has got to come apart so this needs to be able to come off in the future if I ever need to take it off. couple of very thin screws. They won't go in there at the moment because that hole's a little bit too small. So I'm going to work my way up and I've got a couple of self-tapping screws that are slightly different design. It, they won't quite fit either although they're very close fit. Right next I need to transfer those four holes straight through into the bottom of the drill. I think that's just touched it. Yep, a bit of green showing. Yep, I just touched it, I think. Hopefully, that's just touched it. Right. Oh! I'm not quite sure how much plastic we've got there before we pop through 
Oh, that hit the other side. That did. That did. That did. Now the problem is, is that you saw then, I should think, there's very little clearance between there and the underneath of there. So I'm not sure if the screws are going to poke straight through the handle once they're in place. We'll have to have a couple of test fits and see. Right, hopefully that's just a loose fit. Haven't got very much sticking out that side. Oh, that one's just pushed straight through, so that's okay. That one's just pushed almost in. I think it just depends how molten the plastic becomes as the drill bit goes through, because it tends to get a little bit hot. But you can see there's no, that's not tightening up on there at all, because it's not supposed to. Oh, that one's gone straight through. So, with a little bit of luck, this should fit on here. Now I can just feel that that's trying. Not sure about that one, but I think this one is trying to go into the hole. Yes, that one's definitely biting, but let me see. I think that one might be as well. Yep, that one is. Let's see about this one. Yep, that one's starting to bite, so just this one to go. Mm, don't think that one's going in. Maybe that one's going to need a bit of force. Well, I just need to tighten those up and we should be in business. Oh, that's in solid. Oh, that one stripped itself. That one seems to be in solid. That one just doesn't want to go in. No, that one's going round and round, so that one might need seeing too. That hasn't gone down properly. That's a bit better. Now, of course, the problem is, does this fit? Because obviously, once you put screws into something, you change the shape and the size. Oh, yes, and look, it won't go on. The screw heads are going to block that. Should have thought of that. So, they need to be countersunk. I'm going to countersink these by hand because I don't trust the drill not to fire itself straight through far deeper than I want it to go. I think what I'll do is once I've got a slight countersink started I'll go and find a milling bit because the milling bit will give me a flat bottomed hole whereas this drill piece won't. But of course I can't use the milling bit to start off with because it won't center itself. So this is a six millimeter drill bit the great thing about milling cutters is of course they're very, very sharp. Let's see if that will... Yep, that's just below the surface, that's ideal. Still a bit tight. If 
run the drill bit for it a couple of times. Yep, that's below the surface, that's below the surface. Yep, that should be below the surface. Oh, that one's a bit tight as well. Ooh, touch it go. I, I could do a tiny, tiny bit more on that one. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. That one's in, that one's in. So this is the one that's got stuck. Oh. I swear this plastic tightens itself up afterwards. Yet another problem. That bit seems to be fine. This looks like it's fine, but if you look just where the battery goes on, it's hitting there. So this step on the battery is too high to go on there. It's too high by oh, maybe two millimeters or so, but of course that's way too much. And I don't have anything that I can trim away here, really, because it would take the strength out of the handle. I clearly don't want to trim any part of the battery away. So, had I stopped the battery so that the battery sat there, it would have been okay. But I wouldn't have liked it looking like that anyway. So, this has got to lift up. And I think I've run out of perspex. <laughs> This is the last scrap of perspex that I could find. Um, it's, it's that shape because there was a piece cut out already. But it's basically a square. I've cut two holes here to go around where the terminals are because I need to get to that point to solder it. Hopefully that gap's big enough. If not, I'll worry about it later. Now, of course, my bolts are now too short. So I have got these longer ones so I can always try these instead I'm a little bit worried that these are going to try to push through and actually come out a little bit too far so I might just grind the points off of them first they're good old-fashioned cross heads don't see those very often but they are stainless steel so but I've got a feeling that these and not the same thread. Obviously they're not really threaded, are they? I mean they're um, self-tapping, but because this one's already tapped a sort of thread in the plastic, I've got a feeling that these are not going to hold very well. But you know, they're now too short, so it doesn't really matter whether it's going to hold well or not, because it's not going to work. So yeah, I think a tiny bit ground off of there would do. Right, extra plate is on underneath, so that's lifted it up by 4mm. It's a pity that I can't support this edge, but maybe I can find something to go under there at a later date. But it looks like it's going to clear. I don't know if that shows, because the light's not brilliant today, but there is a gap. So that... should be on. Now I could do with something taking up some of this space because it looks a bit odd like that but obviously it's not working yet because we still haven't worked out how to wire it up. But we've got a battery in place, fully charged, mounted, drill will stand on the battery 
you wouldn't quite say it looks as good as factory, but it looks like it might work. The wiring is going to be a slight problem in that the new battery, that side there is plus, and that side there is minus. But the drill itself, this side is plus and this side is minus. Now I can either try to rewire the wires internally or I can just take the wires from the existing connections and swap them. I can't just swap the wires inside because although the motor won't care the part that's used for trigger control probably will care and it will probably be very unhappy if I put the plus on the minus and the minus on the plus so we can't just do that I'm making up a couple of little jumper leads to test everything I will come up with a better solution which probably involves soldering later but I would like to at least test to see that everything is going to work the wire I'm using is sold as high current capacity speaker wire but I believe it's current carrying capacity when I see it in practice. Right, this one's going to have two little red markers on it to remind me that that's the positive one because obviously there's no colouring on it and this one will have nothing on it so it will be the negative one. These crimpers are very good but they won't go all the way down and they keep catching when they haven't quite gone closed all the way and once I've got them like that they won't close. <laughs> can't, I can't squeeze them any tighter than that so I have to release the ratchet on the back to get the thing out. They're really the wrong crimpers for this but they'll do for now. Right what I've got to do now then is put this in there which is when I say in there in there. It's going to be very very difficult to film what's going on in there so I won't get too worried if about things but like that will be the positive side so that one needs to go down in there and the battery connector, the original battery connector is down there and I've straightened it slightly so I should be able to push this terminal onto it Alright, I think that's gone on it's very springy so it's trying to spring across against to the other one but I don't think that's going to matter because I don't think they're ever going to meet in the middle. Let's try that one. But as I say it's very very fiddly down in there. But oh, there it, goes. it needs to be a reasonably tight fit because I don't want the thing to fall off at the first opportunity. Right now, as I said, this one is now the plus, and of course, the plus is on the other side, it's over here now. So, plus is there now. I'm not sure I'm going to get a really good connection on here but in a way it doesn't matter because this is the battery end and so should it fall off I just lose battery. If it falls off at the other end they could touch and the battery will short out and that would be bad news. Now obviously I don't need all this wire but I'm not sure how I'm going to push these together and then shut the whole thing down so push that on onto there now it's just a case of trying to poke all this lot down inside here 
Like that. Right, screws in place. That one tightens up, that's quite good. That one tightens up, I've got a feeling that these two will not. No, that one won't go. Oh, and that one more or less does. So three out of four. Oh, it's better than nothing. Right, moment of truth. Let's lift you up a bit so we've got some more room. Right. Listen out for a loud bang. Has that gone on? I think that's gone on okay. Whoa, we're in business. Change direction. That's interesting, it sounds much more powerful going forwards. Interesting. Hardly notice all the difference in speed itself. I don't know if it says anywhere what the speeds are. Oh, 500 and 1400. Oh, so full blast is apparently 1400. Alright, let's try it out as a screwdriver and see how we get on. Uh, I better not go. Oh, mind you, if I turn it on this side. I just don't want to screw into my bench. That's better. I know you can't quite see it at the moment, but you will when I move it over. Cutting in. Cut one more. Oh, cutting in. One more. Oh, now I'm not strong enough. Well, that's not bad, is it? Whoops. Hold on, tight. That was on the number eight setting. Let's do it again. Oh, that's not bad going at all, is it? A cheap on Chinese drill, is that? That's number two. it doesn't try and rip my arm off. I'll try and turn it a bit so you can see it better. No, that ain't gonna work. No, that's better. Oh, I'm not strong enough to push it down. <laughs> Going back to number one. Well, that's not too bad. I think I'm ruining my screwdriver a bit. Let's get a drill bit and try drilling into a bit of wood. This is a 10mm high speed steel drill bit. It's not designed for wood, it's... I suppose you'd call these multi-purpose though, wouldn't you? So it doesn't really matter. Um, for now I'll go in where the screw is, just to see what difference that makes. Oh, backwards. Oh, wow, it's powering through there. Can't complain about that. I'll go through where I'm not going through the screw. That's not bad, I think that's still on number one. Let's try it on number two. Oh my good one. Well we certainly can't complain about that. That's um pretty good going. <laughs> <laughs> 